Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Pause. I'm Mitch and welcome to the Piggy Love 2023 Valentine's Day collaboration. This year we've got 23 amazing artists in this lineup and we've put together a wonderful playlist so that you can just click on the link and follow every artist one after the other and have an all day uh, piggy party marathon. Um, so we've all been sent these uh, cutout hearts on MDF uh, from Fluid Art Co. And we've all been asked to create an amazing artwork on these they will be auctioned off and all the proceeds will be donated to a pig sanctuary here in Australia. So uh, each artist is going to do a different pore style, all showcasing the TLP pigments and I can't wait to show you what I've got in mind. Alright, so it's voiceover Mitch here and we're going to go through the process of how I made these acrylic skins. So I've got my Fluid Art Co silicon mat down on my uh, spinner and this is the 24 by 24 inch mat so 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter and I'm layering on all of the duo colors from this little piggy so I've got glisten, macaw, shimmer, comet and twinkle and these are interference colors so they look white until you tilt them in the light and you can see the different colors that they reflect and refract so I'm speeding through this process here because painting these acrylic skins does take a little while and it can get a little bit tedious but you can see as I tilt it in the light there, you can see all those colors um, reflecting and throwing off different colors depending on which angle you see them from. Interference colors are really awesome. Little bits of science there. Um, the skin that I'm pouring now, I'm using my black pillow. I've got some Pebio uh, iridescent blue black as my base here. And then I have some TLP Waterfall, I believe. There's Deja Vu, Prey Night, Violet Rain, Honeycomb, uh, another blue there. I know that there's a little bit of rosé on the top, um, and I think that was Dioxazine Purple as well. Uh, so I painted these quite a while ago. Um, so trying to remember which colours I use is a bit difficult. I think there's also Matisse Southern Ocean Blue in there somewhere. Um, I can see that coming through right at the end here. And so this makes like a little jelly bean looking colored skin which was really cool and really interesting and this one here is a rainbow skin so this was a skin that I actually made for another piece of artwork which was my giraffe piece which is also on my channel and I'm using several different TLPs here I've got Grenache I believe that's Twilight there may also be uh, could be watermelon there I'm not quite sure I know I definitely used Zeus or Horizon Parakeet Mango uh, looks like lily pad, there's sea glass, there's taffy, lakeside, uh, hammerhead, I believe this was just when hammerhead came out, uh, there's also nightfall, constellation, lots and lots of piggies in this piece um, and that one at the bottom there is nebula. So uh, the piece that I have in mind is to do a patchwork heart um, and I'm very happy with how the piece came out because it is voiceover Mitch speaking and not painting Mitch. Um, it'd be quite incredible if I could speak this, uh, this slowly while doing the piece this fast. Um, so the idea was to use up some old paint skins that I had and paint some new ones for this. So this was from, um, like I said, my giraffe skin and uh, it fit perfectly into the piece that I created with all these paint skins. So I'm just doing a simple swipe, you can sort of take some photos there for social media, um, and I'm just using my normal Shelly Art Cell Activator, which is Amsterdam Lamp Black with Australian Floatrol. Now you can see how big this uh, Flu uh, Fluid Art Co mat is, just by you know the size of my head on there. They are quite large, but they make really, really nice skins, um, and they give you a lot of room to work on. Um, so I'm just spinning, making sure I'm getting enough paint off so they dry nice and thin. You don't want them too thin, but you don't want them too thick. It does take a lot of practice to get them just right. Alright, so I've got plenty of paint skins here and plenty to choose from. So like I said, I did paint some paint skins specifically for this piece, but my goal was to use up some of the offcuts, um, some of the leftover bits from old paint pores that I may not use again. So this is a really a great way and a really interesting idea to use those all up and something different to what I normally do. So these two uh, paint skins that I have here are exactly the same. The difference is the pillow they were painted on and the cell activator used. So this one is a white pillow with a white cell activator but all of the colors are the same so the one that I just painted um, or just showed myself painting is up the top there 
and you can see how shiny and brilliant those pigments are in there. You can see they dry really, really, really shiny and really glossy. And that's also partially due to the pouring medium that we use when we're doing the Shelly Art Bloom, which is the untinted house paint, which has a gloss finish. Um, also adding the varnish to it really brings out that glossy shine. So you can see how thin they are. Um, they're nice and pliable, nice and flexible and really easy to work with. Um, when working with skins, really important to let them cure before you take them off the mat for at least a week or two. This one here is a chameleon skin. So I believe I used TLP Pompous in here, but I had a whole heap of chameleon pigments left over um, from the first batch that I bought a couple of years ago when I started pouring. Um, so I was trying to use those all up. In this piece, this is the interference skin. Um, I actually had some left over. So I did paint a whole new skin for this one and not realizing that I had interference um, paint skins from another project but uh, they were all painted exactly the same, so you can see those colors. Um, they, you can see them much better when you turn the bright lights off um, and you're just left with overhead or pinpoint light. So this adds a really nice bit of dimension to the final piece um, because you can see nice color everywhere and this just looks white until you catch it on an angle and you go, oh, there's actually color there. So it adds a little bit of interest to that. Um, I've got some black paint skin there. It's just plain black with uh, black cell activator. This one um, uses this little piggy taffy, this little piggy sapphire, and a chameleon pigment called Better, which is from um, my original stash that I had. Um, and it is a brilliant chameleon sh uh, pigment, shifts from blue to purple, but we now have Pretentious, which also shifts from blue to purple, and that's a stuck up piggy. Um, this one here is from my giraffe piece. This was actually a spare piece of the neck, um, and it contains this little piggy Zeus and Ore. And I used a gold cell activator, which I also enhanced with a TLP Zeus to give it that really nice dark color. And it's so, I want to create cells that sort of blend in with the background that aren't so obvious. Um, I also believe I used quinacridone nickel azo gold from Golden in this piece to give it that bit of brown. Um, up the back there, I'm not sure if I pick it up here. Um, I have that red piece. Oh, this is the piece that I just painted, okay? So this, like I said before, it's got Violet Rain, Prenight, Waterfall, Rosé, Honeycomb, uh, what was the other one, Bellini, and there's one more color, there's seven. Oh my gosh, can't believe I'm forgetting. Um, but basically all the last release pigments um, that we had in November, those are all in that piece. So I wanted to make a really, really nice piece with all of those. Um, that red piece up the back contains um, Grenache, Maraschino, Matisse Cadmium Red and Black Cell Activator. So we were all given these hearts to pour on and I was just explaining here uh, that I've lightly sanded the surface back um, and getting get that ready to attach all of our paint skins to. All right, now begins the really fun process and I did have a lot of fun doing this, as tedious as it was. Um, of laying out all of our paint skins and cutting them into the shapes for the final heart. So the way I've done this is I've taken my transfer tape, which I just used for my Cricut, and I've cut a square that's roughly the size of the heart. It's not as big, but it doesn't matter so much. And that's gonna hold all our paint skins in place while we place them onto our heart here. So I'm just getting all of my various skins cut up into rough blocks and placing them on my heart so I can see where they are going to fit and just slicing and dicing as I go, trying to find where the most uh, use of color is going to be, where it's going to um, be contrasting, but also fit in with the total design. Um, and I really wanted to use up this rainbow skin because I've had it for quite a while now and I couldn't think of another use for it, so this is going to be perfect. I also didn't want to use too much of those chameleon skins because I wanted the focus to be on the TLPs, um, but I did think that that little piece added a little bit of extra dimension um, with those squiggly cells. So I'm unfolding my transfer tape slowly across uh, all of those pieces and just trimming off the edge and I'm sticking it on the top there because that top piece wasn't uh, stuck to anything. Um, in hindsight, adding blue painter's tape here was a mistake because it was difficult to get off, but not too difficult. Now what I've done is I've just flipped the whole piece upside down and I'm using my sharp uh, straight blade knife, my Stanley knife, uh, to cut around the edges and just cut a rough shape. I wasn't doing this too perfectly because I did want to have a little bit of overhang for once everything was stuck on and then I trim it again. 
So now I've got a rough shape, I've got a rough outline, now I can decide which pieces I want to have more visible and which pieces I want to cut out. So to do this I needed to secure it on both sides uh, so that if I'm cutting pieces off the top I remove the top piece and if I'm cutting pieces off the bottom I remove the bottom piece of transfer tape so I can peel those out which you'll see in a minute. Now I did keep all of these offcuts of transfer tape off to the side so that I could use them to stick little bits and pieces down uh, throughout this whole process. So don't throw that stuff away, you can use it. Um, and then once I was all done, I did throw it out. So here I really liked this little fish scale pattern uh, in that top piece of uh, the paint skin. So I followed that with the craft knife and that's the piece that I wanted to be visible as a hole on the top so you can see they match up perfectly there and then I'm just sticking that down and that's the piece that I end up keeping so that's the first little cut and then it's just a matter of figuring out which pieces I wanted to have more visible which ones I wanted to hide so uh, I'll go through this whole process you know just making wavy lines here and there uh, over the, making sure that I'm always following uh, the inside edge of one of those pieces so that way uh, when they overlap they overlap perfectly and so I'm trying to find the places where each of the skins overlapped and may, and just feeling my way underneath so sometimes I'll flip it over and have a look to see where the skin underneath is um, so you can see here uh, this little piece down the bottom gave me a little bit of trouble because I couldn't actually feel properly where this skin overlapped but here just taking out that center bit and I wanted this whole piece to be red to look sort of like the heart was splitting in two um, but I decided against it later on uh, and changed it to another piece of paint skin um, just to fit in a little bit better. It looked like there was just too much red there um, and I'm much happier with how the final piece ended up. So I'm just going to continue cutting away. Uh, you can watch the process. I'll leave some music on and then I'll come back when it's time for the next step.
All right, so it's time for the next step and that is sticking all of these pieces down. So all I did here was I painted my heart black with some uh, black house paint and just used my hair dryer to really quickly dry that. And the reason I've done that is so that if there are any gaps between any of the paint skins, they're not gonna be noticeable as the brown of the MDF um, and the black will hide that better. So all I have here is some PVA glue and I'm just using a brush to stick down the pieces basically. Nothing too, too difficult about that. Um, and this part I found really tedious just trying to peel the transfer tape off. And as you can see, I, I said before um, that the masking tape was a mistake <laughs> because it was a lot more difficult to peel up than the transfer tape. But that's something I'll learn for next time. And so I'm just applying the PVA glue in to one patch at a time so that I can make sure that everything fits nicely. And I'm just trimming off the excess transfer tape as I go so I don't have a big bulk of that uh, sticking to other pieces on my heart. So I've got a pair of tweezers there. They came in really, really handy for just lifting up corners and edges of the, part, uh, the parts of uh, paint skin um, so that I could get the brush underneath there to stick those down. And you can see the transfer tape is ripping uh, quite a bit here and that was because I had multiple pieces of transfer tape laid on top of each other So if I was to do this again I would say try and keep it to one layer of transfer tape if you can because having multiple makes it more difficult to remove them And I ended up just peeling all the pieces off and jigsawing them back together on the heart and then gluing them down one by one uh, That seemed to be the easiest way to do it um, until I got to this piece This piece really confused me and I couldn't figure out for the life of me where it went <laughs> um, So it wasn't until I figured out uh, I pulled off the next piece where I actually figured out where it went. Um, so yeah, it sort of fits in there. And the last piece up the top. Now, I also realized that I snipped off um, a little piece of the pink there. So I had to cut off another piece of that skin just to fit it in, but you would never tell. And that's all art is. Art is all about making mistakes, but uh, you know, not showing them. Uh, it's about covering your mistakes and you know, people will never know that they're there. Uh, so just continuing to apply the PVA glue and I'm apply, uh, I applied quite a fair bit um, which in hindsight you don't need that much because I did experience quite a few bubbles and they weren't air bubbles, they were glue bubbles. So I was able to squeeze that glue out from underneath. Um, but yeah, really go light on the PVA and work really quickly because it does dry quite fast. Now because I was putting a layer of resin on this, I wasn't... Um, fussed about the sticking power of the PVA. Um, if you are varnishing or you're just doing something where you're adhering the paint skin to the wood or to paint, use a stronger glue that has a little bit of a longer drying time. Um, I was pretty happy with the PVA, like I said, because I was putting resin on top. And I did let this cure for about two to three days um, just to let that glue really set so I don't have any issues with my resin. And I'm just pushing out all of those bubbles uh, if you do experience bubbles a lot in your work, I very highly suggest buying acupuncture needles. Uh, so I used to use those when I was a cake decorator. They were great for getting the bubbles out of fondant. Uh, so I found another use for those on this and it makes a much less obvious hole than if you poked um, you know, a skewer or something into your painting. So now I'm just using my sharp bladed knife to cut around the uh, heart cutout. Um, again, I should have flipped this upside down and cut it out from the underside, always using a sharp knife. So you saw I snapped off the end of my craft bladed knife there to get a really nice sharp, nice sharp point. Um, and that just makes life so much easier. Now uh, the glue was already dry at this point, so I just flipped it upside down and really carefully uh, trimmed around the edge just to get all of those little bits of overhanging uh, paint skin off there and I was cautious not to move it too much because I, although the glue was dry um, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't you know still wet in certain areas and slipping around so looks pretty good um, but looks even better when I change around that little patch like I say so now came the really fun part and that was to draw in all of the stitching so what I've got here is a black Posca pen with a hard tip it's like a hard nib tip um, and all I'm doing is going in and painting tiny little black dots uh, all the way around the joins so I tried to do a dot either side of the seam and in some places I purposely didn't do a dot either side of the seam so I could do some crossovers and little switchy bits which will look really really cool in the final piece so that it's not all just uniform stitching 
and in the corners when I add the silver pen next I made sure that the corners joined up with multiple pieces of the paint skin. So this whole process of doing the dots took about an hour. Um, just take your time with it, see where they work best, see where there's uh, natural dots in the paint skin if you have them, which I did. Um, so you don't have to add a dot there, you can you know, do whatever you like in this stage. So this stage was pretty much doodling and you know, just refining the art piece, adding in those little details that make it all come together. Just using my hairdryer there to set the paint, especially on places because I'm a lefty, I do tend to work right to left, but sometimes I forget that and I am bound to smudge absolutely everything. Um, <laughs> yes, it's a tragedy, I know I'm a lefty. Um, now I'm going in with my chrome pen. This is a Molotow chrome pen, they're the absolute best. And this is the one with a really chunky nib on it. And I'm just joining those black dots to make all of the stitching that binds all of this together. So it sort of reminds me of like that loved bear that's been patched up multiple times, or you know, that quilt that grandma makes that, you know, it may not look the best, but it's comfy and that's all that matters. So uh, the whole point of this art piece is to remind people that it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter what art style you're doing, it's all art and we all fit together in one big community. Sort of like a patchwork quilt. So as you can see I'm making those um, little zigzags, little crosses, little X's um, and just making sure that I'm getting all of those pesky little bubbles out that they continue to form uh, even after the glue was dry and the bottom of my heart uh, wasn't perfectly pointed so I just cut off that little bit of skin there and that's pretty much done. So I did the patch there off camera as you can see and I'm just using a cotton tip here with some isopropyl alcohol to rub off any bits of black or uh, silver that may have gotten onto the pieces of the painting that I didn't want it to do. I'm using my stone coat countertop epoxy for this as well as my unicone uh, crushed glitter magic resin pigment powder, whatever that is. I've got my uh, TLP Macaw and some Glittered Pixies um, Ultra Fine, I think it's Sparkling Alabaster uh, Glitter, which I'm going to put in certain places. And I've got my 3M respirator mask with my N95 filters. Always wear uh, gloves, your mask, respirator and uh, apron when you're working with resin. And safety first guys, very important. So here I've got my resin all mixed up using my little mixer there and I'm going to pour a clear layer on first and then I'm going to add the glitter to my remaining resin to fill in any of the gaps. So I do add just a tiny tiny bit of that unicone glitter into all of my paintings. It just makes them have that little bit of extra sparkle, it catches the light in a certain way and if you're doing any sort of functional art like a table, it absolutely changes everything. Um, also, the glitter will hide a lot of dirt and hair and any little specks that are prone to get into your resin. It's guaranteed, it's impossible to keep it all out. Um, so by adding the glitter in there, it does hide a lot of those little blemishes and things. And honestly, you will never ever see them, you'll never even pick them out. Even if you see it once, you'll never see it again. So I'm adding the teeniest, tiniest amount of um, TLP Macaw and that um, crushed glittered pixies resin, uh, glitter, sorry and you can just see it floating over that purple there. And this just adds tiny little hints of um, color and glitter into uh, certain parts of the finished piece. They're almost so subtle that you, you don't see them at all, um, but they're definitely there. And the remaining glitter I just poured into my silicon uh, mold there, which is a unicorn mold, and it's just basically where I put all of my leftover resin. And here is the final cured piece, and I think it turned out stunning very happy that I changed over that little patch in the middle it was just too much red and all I did when I changed that over because I used PVA glue it's very easy to rip that paint up and I just used my Stanley knife to basically follow the join in those um, two patches either side to make it look like one continuous piece so here you go look at all those beautiful piggies shining there and they look almost metallic um, because they give such a fine um, they are such a fine powder I should say. They give a really continuous seamless look. Um, now because I didn't use much tube paint in these paintings 
they can look a little bit flat because it's all shimmer. So by adding tube paints in there, you really create that depth and dimension that gives those paintings that 3D look, um, especially with the cell activator if you're doing the bloom technique, but it, it does uh, help in any technique that you're doing to have bits of shimmer and bits of uh, matte paint. So I turn the lights off there just so you can see those interference pigments uh, in the white section. Now there's one step left with this and that is to take the tape off the back. So the easiest way to do this is I always have my, my craft knife on standby and I use my heat gun to go around the edges of the tape and that should soften up those drips just enough that you can peel everything off. You don't want to melt your resin, um, you definitely don't want to burn your tape, which I have done in the past. Um, so just softening that up, applying a little bit of heat, you don't have to have a powerful heat gun, just one that's going to get that resin soft enough that you can peel it up. Uh, for any stubborn spots, use your craft knife to just cut straight through that resin and you should be good. Uh, just for reference, I did this 24 hours after pouring the resin. Alrighty everyone, so my heart piece is finished and here it is. So it looks absolutely phenomenal, really really pleased with this final result and it's a great way to use up um, leftover paint skins if you have them or paint some fresh ones if you want to try this one for yourself. The technique is really really simple, really easy to do. Um, you just cut up your patches, stick them all together and stick them onto your heart. So if you want to try this at home you definitely can. Uh, this piece will be up for auction with the rest of the artworks from this collaboration and you can find the auction site link in the description below and it will be in all of our descriptions as well as well as through the Facebook event in the, this little piggy group. Um, just in case you can't find that, the website is Octria, which is A-U-C-T-R-I-A dot events slash piggy love 2023. So head over on there, the auction is now live, it started at the beginning of this um, video train. So head on over there, you'll have, I think it's 48 hours or a little bit longer to place your bids on these pieces and good luck to the highest bidder. And um, yeah, own your own piece of unique art from some amazing international artists. Uh, don't forget, all proceeds will be donated to the Where Pigs Fly Farm Sanctuary here in New South Wales. Um, it's about an hour and a half away from where I live, so that's pretty awesome. Um, all proceeds will be donated to that, um, minus the cost of shipping of all of these pieces. So go ahead, place your bids, do some good for, some, for a uh, lovely charity, for a good cause, and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. Bye, guys.